Welcome to this week's Whole Week Costa. How's it going, Kev? So I feel like... um. Oh, hold on. Beer table. Oh, yeah. So we got Lord Chesterfield. Um, I feel like we've... We've had a like ton, ton of yingling facts so far. A ton of yingling. I feel like we've um, probably drank Lord Chesterfield before as well. Oh, we definitely have. Yeah, I mean... And I, regular yingling. And there. yingling Oktoberfest. Yingling porter? A porter? No. No. Yeah. But we should definitely do black and tan soon. I feel like I wanted to drink the porter one day, and then we got something else. Yeah. So my association with Lord Chesterfield, I'm just saying, is... I feel like it's a beer my dad drinks going hunting, so that's what I think about with it. So it feels like a real manly beer. Yeah, but your dad shouldn't drink it because he's union. Yingling's anti-union. Uh, I guess he, I guess he probably is now. Yeah. I don't think he really... Well, yeah. It was when he worked at Temple. Well, I guess he wasn't for a while. Well, but. no, he is union. Yeah, he's he carpenter's he, union. Yeah, he uh, I asked him what he did, Yeah, and he said nothing. Yeah. yeah at so that's, Sugar that's, House that's or union. something. Yeah. Yeah. So he's actually going to switch to days, which is real weird. So he, he works nights now. Um, I'm, I talked to my mom last night, and she said he's going to switch to uh, switch to days, which is going to be real weird. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be better for him. I think it'll be better. I don't know. I feel like he's real, like, he, like he hasn't wanted to do, like, a lot of stuff. Like, we went to that dinosaur thing over the weekend, and, like, he didn't want to come. And I just I wonder if it's because he's, like, you know, messed up from working nights for, like, yeah. a year or two now. I mean, he's getting older, so I think at this point – it's good for him to work days because at nights, like he can spend more time with his grandkids. Yeah, true. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. It always sucks. Like we go over there with Sam and stuff. Um, you know, like like when I have, like when I'm on the weekdays, like if we go over there, you know, he like goes to bed before Sam leaves and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, because he has to sleep at least a little bit before work. Yeah. I uh, I just I didn't never told you this. I just recently had a phone interview. Okay. Uh, for IKEA as a. Uh, Shipping supervisor. Oh, you should absolutely work. If you get the IKEA job, it's one one hundred percent take it. Yeah, uh, I didn't get it. Mm. It was uh, it was making like double what I yeah. have, what I make now. It wasn't IKEA in Philly. Yeah, it was IKEA warehouse in West Hampton. Okay, which is giant. They ship to like all the I- IKEAs around the area. You should just you should interview for whatever IKEA job. IKEA is one of the best places in the world. Really? Yeah. Like to work? I don't. know. I just like it. Oh, uh, you yeah. just like, like no? It is like great for me. Yeah. Oh, they're having a sale. Um, we should go to IKEA soon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can we can do a live on location from IKEA. I wish. And they'll like kick us. Out. They'll be like, yeah. well, "What are you doing?" They're like, yeah. oh, "We're just broadcasting." Oh, uh, if we bought the mobile recorder, the yeah. voice recorder, we could definitely do that with the yeah. microphones. They're like, "Sirs, please put your microphones yeah. away." Um, um, I, I feel like I talked about before that I feel like IKEA is like if you're have, ever having an argument or relationship, you go to IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, because you just you know you, you see stuff you want to buy, it's like oh, it's like oh look we you know oh we're gonna get that thing for the house like oh, okay I guess it's well, you know like like you think about thinking about you think about the fact there is a future so then it's like oh, I guess it's nothing so bad we're gonna be doing these things don't worry about it all right I wanted to talk about uh, movies this week oh, wait before we do that all right we have to talk about um, so we have currently seventeen episodes released seventeen ish I didn't really count N- ninety three downloads on iTunes. Yeah. So that's so somebody's downloading this. Um we don't really know who. Um I don't I don't know how iTunes works. Um I don't know I don't I don't I, I guess I have an iTunes account cuz I have like an iPhone for work, but I don't really understand it or how you download a podcast on iTunes. But I, but I I do but I I do I do know YouTube and we upload these on YouTube as well. Oh, I think we're on Spotify as well. I have to double I have to double check. I added us on Spotify. Also no idea what Spotify is. Yeah um you're like you're like working with an old man like it took it took <laughs> six months to get get you to get venmo yeah. also kelly still owes me 325 i'm real upset she's never gonna get venmo you're never gonna get it yeah. unless she has exact change one day you're, you're I'm, gonna get it. I'm gonna text her too while you talk you should you should come over with like you should come over with like a couple dollars worth of quarters one day and like she'll probably have like a five and then, and then, <laughs> and then you can get it um so um but yeah, anyway, so if you're one of the, obviously, two or three people that have downloaded our podcast, um, you should go on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, because I don't know what the iTunes shit is, and comment that it's you, that you've downloaded the stuff, so we can love you. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll shout you out. Yeah. With love. All right. So, that's that's the plan. Yeah. Um, We're almost in real time. Uh, releasing these, so that's good. Yeah, so uh, good. Last so you, time was my fault. So you should hear this this week, right? 
tomorrow even. Oh, did, did we title the last one about, about yeah. the... Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, Holy Costa will help your love life. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now can I talk movies? Yeah, fine. All right. I got two movie ideas that people will say are terrible, and we're going to talk Last Jedi. Mm. Um, also, I want to write a book, mm. but it's going to be terrible. I've always wanted to write a book. Yeah. Uh, so my first movie idea, people say it's terrible, but I'm making a uh, like Dungeons and Dragons like dice roll game out of it. Mm-hmm. I've been working on it slowly, yeah, uh, like a mystery type game. I wanted to do that too. I wanted to make like a like a like a pen and paper sort of game. Um, I, I've like been thinking about it for a long time. Yeah. Um. So no, I did one before uh, with a bunch of people like. Three years ago, I want to say. Fuck those people. Yeah, hold on. And they go, Unless you're one of the listeners. Yeah. No, they're not. Okay. Um, Fuck those people. So, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, so, I was like, oh, give me some feedback. And everybody, like, gave me one or two pieces of advice. And, mm-hmm. I don't know. and one guy gave me, like, 12. Like, he I'm like, shut up. Okay? Yeah. Like, I get it. Like, you didn't. You thought I could have done more. But it's my first time. Uh, but I think I'm just, so he's not invited anymore. Um, you should listen to all the extra credits about making your first game. They nah. they have a whole series on it. It's awesome. Nah, I think it's. I mean, it's all about you know starting small. You know, doing stuff incrementally. You know, having realistic goals, play testing as soon as possible. So like everything else. Yeah, but yeah, but it, but it's like, but they really break it down. You know, and and their, and, their, and and their big thing is, and 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 I I know a couple people have done this that I know have like you know, had an idea for a game and like worked on it for like years and like it probably, and like nothing ever happened with it. And they eventually gave up cause like it sucked. But, but their thing is like, you should figure out a concept you can make like in a month right. and you should make the game and you should you know, finish it and have somebody play it and then like throw it out because like, you know, it sucks cause like your first game, but you did it to get practice, right. you know, and then you should keep doing that and get a little better basically. And, you know, and their thing is that, um, you know, essentially, you know, and their, their big thing is you should play tests all the time. Like, like you should, um, you know, because, because, because other people look at your game and see stuff that you don't realize, or like, you know, if you think the game's fine, then it's probably like other people probably won't understand it because they haven't been working with like you have. So, so from as soon as you have like <laughs> pieces of paper, what's that? Kelly got Venmo. Really? <laughs> How did that just happen? <laughs> I don't know. Are we broadcasting live now? Or yeah. Are we accidentally live streaming this? Yeah. No, I text her. Huh. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, but but yeah, the idea basically is to not be afraid of of your ideas, um, and that you know you should let other people rip them apart and criticize them and stuff. Like, you know, the the, the important thing is that you're 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 making a game because you love games and you want to make you want to make a good game for other people and. You know, it's it's not shameful if other people criticize it or other people have advice to give you. You, right. know, you, you, you know, you can't you can't protect your ego. No, it's fine. Like I'm I'm okay with feedback, but like a couple feedback, like be honest, but not too honest. Like yeah. you, you have to build and build, build and build and build. But here's the thing, yeah. and, I, and I heard a pretty like inspirational thing. Like I was listening to uh, this guy Rudy Sarzo. He's a <laughs> bass player from like the seventies. Like he toured with. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne mm. and Quiet Ride and all this other stuff. Like he's mm. a bass player, and he was on a podcast and he was talking about like it's kind of inspirational. And he's like, you should always try to be the best that you can be, because mm-hmm. only one person is the best. You know, and and sure. I'm like, and I'm like, it kind of, it kind of, like in a way, it's like, it's like, don't strive to be the best because. Only one person can be the best, but you can be the best that you can be, and you can take aspects from other people and make them yours. So the, the extra credits, must, you know, tie in, and and I have this, I have this T-shirt from extra credits is, and it's from this whole, it's from one of the, these episodes is, it says on the shirt, "Fail faster." That was the title of the episode. It says, "No idea is made fully formed. Your ideas can't be precious. Or your ego can't need protecting." Every failure is a chance to get it right. Right. No, I mean you fail. You fail a hundred times. It might be at work once. So I'm not. I'm not worried about it. It's like dating. Yeah. I failed probably eighty times before I actually met someone I I liked. Now probably forty, and then I liked, and then she broke my heart, and I, 
yeah. and then another forty, and then we're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot, so, a lot of fat girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, unless a lot of our listeners are fat girls, and then we like we, we love, love fat girls. Yeah, love no, them. but they know how to take pictures. Like, like if I think fat girls should be photographers, they know the right angles. Yeah. Oh, that, I'm just kidding. Uh, I want to apologize I'm for all my remarks. I, I like. I didn't know how much to make a joke, or like, uh, I, I, I want to take back everything. Let's, let's. Yeah. If we ever figure out how to edit, we'll, we'll cut, we'll cut this in editing. Yeah, I can't edit. I'm just yeah. going to edit it. But yeah. uh, our, th- our uh, four listeners. Oh, will... did you hear about? Um, and we'll get to the movie thing. Um, H H and M had a like a little kerfuffle this week. Oh, with the black kid. Yeah. So, so I, I, th- th- I thought it was funny. So I think I was thinking Jungle Gym. I think H and yeah, I think H and M's response was stupid. I think you know because so it was you know for for our many listeners, if you don't know, you know essentially it was something like it was it was a t shirt and advertisement, and it was like a little it was a black kid modeling it and it said like um, like like what like best monkey in the jungle or something like yeah. that, and I feel like and I mean I guess there's a chance that like it could have been someone at H and M like being an asshole and thinking they were like getting one over on like corporate and like trying to be like crudely funny um but i mean i feel like h&m's response should have been like it, it's it's a shirt about monkeys in the jungle kids like monkeys like if you have a problem with it then you're a racist like i mean i feel like that should have been their response like like i feel like to apologize and like take it back right like just makes them look bad i mean i feel like they could have taken the higher ground and been like the shirt's not racist if you if you have a problem with it you're a racist All right like this is a shirt that kids will like that's why we made it although although i did see <laughs> I did see like a thing making fun of it and it was like a little white kid and it was like best cracker in the box. <laughs> and yeah. It was like, uh, it was like a Mexican kid and it was like best, best taco in the stand or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know. I, I just think H and M took a real wrong turn there. I, I think they could actually made it. I think they could actually had a better anti-racist message like, if, they, if they approached it differently. I, I just, um, I, like I thought it was funny. Like I legit thought it was cute. Like I didn't think about um, like the kid that he was black or anything. I was I just thought Jungle Gym. Like yeah. you know, like everyone here, uh, me and you, yeah. uh, everyone has seen like kids on like uh, leave and go play on the. They they flip out. And they they all look like animals. They're yeah. like running a Jungle Gym. They're like Daddy, look at me. And and I just thought it was cute. Sam and, uh, literally dude, acts like an animal. All the time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If he's not a dinosaur, he's a werewolf. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I just think, um, I don't know. I mean, I think I think it was a stupid shirt to make. Right. But once no, they made it, they had to stand by it. It's a, ter- it's a terrible shirt to model on a black child. Yeah. I mean, I mean, monkey is historically a racist, uh, racist thing. term. I mean, I, mean, I mean, you have to consider that stuff when you make stuff, but I don't know. I just thought they really, they really screwed up the response right. to it. And yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, maybe I, actually I've noticed this uh, mm. because maybe a couple of years ago, yeah. uh, people made this big deal about there was a mixed race couple. Yeah. And then there was a there's a car commercial where the, someone made a, a bunch of people made a big stink about like a uh, uh, another mixed race couple. Mm. And like I was like, wait, that lady's black. And they're like, yeah, she's black. And then like I I searched it for hours. Yeah. She's not black one one bit. <laughs> She's a uh, half Filipino model. Yeah. And I was like, people are making a big deal about this. And then, like, you 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 keep looking at commercials. Then once you're aware, uh, if you if you watch TV for a couple hours, like mm. network TV, <coughs> and you make yourself aware of it. Yeah. A lot of commercials have mixed race couples. And yeah, I guess it's, it's the like, widest appeal. It, yeah. And it, it and unless I was thinking about it. I've never noticed this commercial. Like, yeah. it's people make a big deal about something. Who, who gives a shit? It's that, why does it bother you? It's, they're not hurting anyone. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think I guess on the one hand, if you think about it, it's like, well, from you know, if you're a marketer, um, you know, what's what do you do? You know, do you do you put a white couple? You know, and just like try to be, you know, old timey status quo? Do you put like a black couple? Do you put a mixed race couple? If you have to put a mixed race couple in every commercial, are you pandering? If you put a white couple, are you racist because you don't like minorities? Like, I mean, I mean, basically, you could be screwed with anything. But in the end, 
none of that matters because if you're a marketer, then you have statistics on what's going to sell your product the best, and right. that's what you do. And they don't give a fuck about the race of the yeah. people. They give a fuck about selling the most widgets. Yeah. No, yeah, here's the thing, and and I believe this 100%. Anybody can argue with me. You cannot like Donald Trump. You cannot like big business. You cannot like Wall Street. Mm. Nobody, including Donald Trump, cares about race. They're like, Donald Trump's a racist. He does not give a shit right now. Yeah. You know why? He wants to appeal to as many people. The people that are going to vote for him, the people that are going to buy his stuff, he's going to appeal for him. Yeah. If you hear him talk on Howard Stern, mm. he didn't care. And now people are like, he's racist. It's like, no, you heard him talk about people. And then they're like, well, he wasn't running to uh, black people in in one of his apartment buildings. And it's like, yeah, because he wanted a certain clientele there. Also, this was the 1970s. Everyone was fucking racist in the 1970s. And and you got to realize, like, that's racism and that's bad. Yeah. But when people want to make money, they do what makes money. Yeah. And, like, people are like, now... He's racist. He doesn't care if you're white or black. You know what he cares about? Money, and that's green. It's the only color he yeah. cares about. If you're spending, he doesn't care. You know what? When I was like 10 years, so say like 10 years ago, I mean, I would make way more like sexist jokes. You know, I, you know, it was one of those people that would use the word like gay. Like it was, ah, oh, it's gay. Like it's bad. That's hilarious. Um, uh, South know, Park had a great episode about that. They did. You know, I, I, you know, I used to be one of those people and now I don't really do that much. And like, I just, I just think about it differently because I'm like 10 years older and like the world's a little different than it was like 10 years ago. And I mean, and it's not, I'm not pretending to not think that way. I legitimately don't think that way anymore. Right. So to bring up something that happened 40 years ago. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. This was, and, and this is like a super, it's, <laughs> don't it's, worry. People still bring up the Eagles throwing snowballs. Yeah. I mean, this is like a super old topic now. And I feel like we talked about this in an early whole week, Costa, but I mean, this was a big reason why I had a lot of trouble, you know, I, why I could never support Hillary Clinton because, you know, again, I brought this up before the people that liked her would bring up shit like that. Like, God, oh, Donald Trump was racist 40 years ago. Okay. I think if he, if he, and and I and I am, I am, I probably if you track the timeline of every episode, I probably become less. I, I probably started as a very mild Trump supporter, like in episode one of Holy Costa, and probably somewhere in the middle, I got to like neutral, and now I'm like anti-Trump. Yeah. But I will, st- but I still say I'm still anti-Hillary Clinton supporters, yeah. no matter how anti-Trump I am, because of this bullshit. And this, and again, this is why he's in office. If you're a Hillary Clinton supporter, it's your fault that he's the president. <laughs> it's just I say I'll say it again well, be- 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 because because if, if someone hasn't done something racist in the last 35 years, he's not a racist. Yeah. Well, oh, here's yeah. the thing, uh, my buddy at work. I mean, uh, he's a racist, but that's not the yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't care about. Like any big business, yeah. even the people like that are making, you know, these biracial commercials, uh, they don't care whatever makes the most money. That's, yeah, all, they, that's all they care about. That's all they that don't matters. Care. They don't care at all. Um, but uh, my buddy, uh, he's Puerto Rican, and he was talking. Uh, uh, I oh, talked oh, to. Oh, oh, we have Puerto Rican friend. We can say all the Puerto Rican show we want. No, 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 no. Uh, there's a couple of them, and he's like. Uh, People get mad at him because he doesn't support Donald Trump, yeah. but he also didn't support Obama. He's yeah. like, and people are like, well, we want Obama back. Why don't he's like, why don't we just get a new candidate? There's no Puerto Rican yeah, president. Yeah, not even that. Why don't we just get a new candidate? Like, you don't just because you don't like Trump doesn't mean you like Obama, you know? Because some of his policies weren't that great. I was like, pointed that my son's a quarter Cuban, so if we ever say anything racist against Hispanic people. It's totally fine. Yeah. Totally in the clear. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Don't hope, worry about it. He will definitely get, like, because he's Hispanic. Yeah. Pell Grants. He's getting all the scholarships. Yeah. It's going to be great. Uh, what's, it, uh, what's it called? All right, let's talk movies before people tune out. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, yeah I'll, I'll just keep interrupting with other stuff. So, so, all okay, right. so. so first movie. First movie idea is great. Uh, I told it was a terrible idea. All right, it's a vampire movie, right? Yeah. So, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. No, it takes place in modern times. Uh, yeah. um, it could take place in the future. I don't care. The like, zombie Lincoln. Like 2019. No, n- nothing to do with presidents. Okay. Let me finish. Yeah. All right. So so at first, uh, the vampire, like it's like an epidemic. People are getting killed. And then eventually people start fighting back because mm. they, they didn't know what was going on. 
So when you get in this universe, you're not like allergic to the sun, but your skin's like real bad, so you can't be out in the sun. Mm. So it's like a more realistic take on vampires. A lot of acne. Huh? A lot of acne. Uh, no, even real like bad. third degree burns. Yeah. Yeah. So like, but here's the thing. You're immortal now. Yeah. But here, here's the thing. Uh, I guess you're not immortal. But whatever. You won't just die. Yeah. So here's the thing. You can still... You don't. You're not immune to diseases. So like when you get you get into the sun, you get like the third degree burns and everything. Yeah. You get like infections. Yeah. So and then they didn't get any superpowers, like like superhuman strength or anything, like yeah. in a lot of vampire movies. So people are like fighting back. Mm. Like they start fighting back. Wait, so, so, the, so they just live longer, but they get sunburned really easily. Yeah, yeah. We'll call so it World vampire, War V. Yeah. So the vampires. They start feeding on like the elderly, uh, yeah. children who can't defend themselves, and then sickly. Can they eat so, regular food too, or not? Yeah, they're just vampires. They need blood, though. Okay. Yeah. It's the regular food eat, and blood. Yeah. Okay. Regular food and the hemoglobin, right? Yeah. And um, so they're uh, so they're like feeding on like the elderly and turning the elderly and cripples and all this other stuff. Yeah. So now, like the vampire thing, just kind of took care of itself. Because all the vampires are like old people, and and cripples and everything. Like they're having a hard, like you can defend yourself real easy. Mm. But here's the, here's here's the kicker, uh, because all the old people and cripples are like dying because people are killing the vampires. The world's so much better. Place. Yeah, the, the economy is flourishing. Yeah. The world of God. Like yeah. at first it was real devastating because a lot of people were like turning to vampires and and they're hunting the vampires. Yeah. But they started like all the people that can't like defend themselves. Yeah. They just started attacking them. Yeah. And then like now they're hunting them. So like the world economy like fixes itself for like twenty years. Yeah. And uh, we can get rid of handicap spots. Like yeah, doesn't matter yeah, anymore. Yeah. Uh, so I was told that that's like a terrible idea because you're you're just making fun of like the handicapped and the elderly. Well, it depends. And, so and if like, you did it as like a satire, it could be really good. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Uh, but I just think it'd be like a really funny movie where like the vampires are just norm, like they just have normal human strength, but like they still get infections and like you cut off their arm, like they bleed out, but they don't die and they're like, oh no, and so they're really weak. And then because they can't feed on the blood, they just die anyway. Like, they like can get be, shot uh, in the heart, but they're like, oh, no, this isn't good. I feel like it'd be a good South Park episode. We've mentioned South Park before. Yeah, I feel so, like, they, yeah so they just, they're they attacking, like, the elderly and cripples yeah. and all this I, other stuff. I feel stuff. like somebody who's really good at satire could, could, could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so all the people, like, all, all the people that, like, really can't work for themselves and everything, mm. all the elderly, like, they just get wiped out. Like real quick, and it like every f- every guy in South Philly, is <laughs> it, gone. it fixes Everybody's like sitting home. yeah, it fixes like the world economy. Yeah, like this epidemic that started off real bad mm. is fixed like within twenty. It fixes the world within like twenty years, and people realize like, oh shit, like we shouldn't be like fat losers. Like we should do something with our lives. Yeah. What's your what's your other movie idea? All right, here's the other movie. Now you gotta realize like two, this, it's two guys doing a podcast. Yeah, you gotta realize as fuck. this. Um, Tom Hanks is perfect for this because yeah. no one ever suspect Tom Hanks doing this. I like, re- Tom Hanks can play me. It's fine. No, no, no. It's not about a podcast. So, uh, like you know those uh, a man has a child and doesn't know until the child's like eight type movies. Like I don't know what I do. And yeah. then like he's like real reluctant. And then like he befriends the child, but then he yeah. screws up by like sleeping with another woman and he forgets about her like recital or some shit like that. Yeah. But then become friends at the end. So here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. Here's my pitch. Yeah. Tom Hanks, right? Yeah. Is at his retirement party where he gets a summons to appear at court, right? Mm. After a court order paternity test is proven that this lady, he has a daughter from this lady. Yeah. From a white night stand. Yeah. Oh, by the way, in court. He's like he screams something like she's just a whore that I didn't pay, you know, like real real anti Tom Hanks, yeah. right? And she like slaps him. Tom Hanks would never say that. Yeah, I know. That's why he's perfect. For the role. Even thinking about it makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, they they both get like held for contempt of court and all yeah. this other stuff. All right, uh, so he get, he has his daughter from like a one night stand. It's proven and everything. Now he's got to pay yeah. child support, but he's like against paying child support. He's like, yeah. he's like, I'm on my twilight of my life. I'm retired. I'm a rich. I'm. I used to be an ex CEO. Yeah. All this other stuff, right? Uh, he doesn't want to pay for it, so yeah. he hires a hitman 
to fake a burglary and kill the child and the mother. <laughs> this is real dark. <laughs> yeah. But here's the plan. Yeah. After that, he goes, like, during the whole burglary thing, yeah. he goes there, he kills the burglar and, uh, air quotes, self-defense, right? Yeah. And so, like, he would get caught for manslaughter, right? Yeah. Or, like, you know, he'd be a hero. Like, he went there, he tried to capture this guy. Yeah. But here's what happens. The attacker is wounded by the mother, who's yeah. mortally wounded. The yeah. mother dies. Yeah. The attacker runs off. Yeah. Now he's there, and uh, he's a hero now. Yeah. Because, like, he made the, he tells a lie that says he made the attacker run off, but yeah. the mom got killed and everything. So now he has to take care of this daughter. Yeah. Right? But here's what happens. Yeah. He has to find the hitman before he rats on him and gets him in trouble. Huh. Right? So a lot he, of layers there. Yeah. So eventually he finds the hitman. They get into an argument. Yeah. They kill each other, on, like, through a fight or something like that. Yeah. And then the daughter has an ambiguous ending. What how, happens to the daughter? How how old's the daughter? I don't know, like four or five. Huh. I guess someone finds her or something like that. Yeah. What do you think about that? There's like twist after twist. Yeah, I mean, I could. That's. Yeah. I was told that's the worst movie idea they've ever heard. I think so. I mean, um, I don't. I don't know about. I like it up to the ending. Um, it needs work. Yeah. I mean. I don't know. So I'll, I'll play the hitman. Don't worry about it. All right. So imagine that, like, you market it as a movie, like Tom Hanks is like in his twilight his life, and like he, you know, they show all the scenes where he's like laughing with his daughter and everything. But then yeah. you go see the movie. Yeah. He's just a terrible like, dude. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Tom Hanks. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Right. It'd be like a twist. I mean, it would, people would complain about it so much. Like, yeah. They they complain about it. Like they show the court like. You know, they show, like, in the in the trailer, they show, like, them in court. He's like, I don't want to be part of a life. And then they show, like, the the mom, like, the break-in. And then him being, like, lauded as a hero. And then, the, you know, all this other stuff. They're like, oh, he eventually learns to love her. Something bad happens to the mob. But yeah. then when you watch it, like, oh, my God, Tom Hanks in this role is a piece of shit. Yeah. I think that would be interesting. Um I think people would. I think people would watch. I think we get some buzz because of how like off the wall it is. I think Tom Hanks is a good choice for that. You know, he's the right age range too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like he's retirement, but he had like a one night stand, and yeah. And, and I think the best line in the movie is like, like she's she's just a whore. I never paid. You know, and yeah. people are like, what? <laughs> Tom Hanks would never say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I really have anything like critical to say about that. I, think. I mean, like Tom I Hanks would watch it. never do the role, and I would never get that movie. But they would probably get someone like I don't know Dolph Lundgren to do it or whatever. I don't know. Dolph, he he be the worst person. <laughs> yeah, I know that it would be. He could be a hit man. A C movie. Yeah. No, I was thinking Tom Sizemore. Right, okay. He's real scummy at this point in his life. Um. If Tom Sizemore is one of our fans, then I love you. Who's the guy? Tom Hardy. Think about him for the role. He's too young to be retired. I think so. I think yeah. I'm thinking of him in that. What What's that movie we watched where he's just driving in the car and he's just talking on the phone because he like bangs some girl and then he's like she's giving birth and he's, he's worried about the concrete and all that. Other yeah, stuff. yeah. I forget. He's like he's only like forty. Really? Maybe maybe mid thirties. Really? Yeah. Maybe he's older than that. I look him up. So oh yeah, I, I would recommend that movie too if if anyone's yeah you know you're gonna have a hard time finding it because we I don't know the name but. Um, maybe if you're one of our podcast listeners, you could go on the YouTube channel for this page. Cause that's the only place I'll see you and comment the name of the movie, Tom Hardy in a car talking on the phone for like two hours. That's all that happens. It's just him in the car. There's no other shots. Um, fun fact about the movie. He has some tissues in the car and he blows, blows his nose a lot. And that's cause he was actually sick during the filming. So they just kept it in. Really? I watched that movie with you. Yeah. Just you. No. Dave? No. Like with our with like with like with our with our with our exes. Oh, I watched it with you and our exes? Yeah. Yeah. Um which so I've I've a forking transition point here. So either from that into how people how bad people pan the new Star Wars movie, or I'm curious to hear more about this guy that you talked to from Reddit. Oh. Uh. 
Hold on, get get that. You can pan you can pan the Star Wars movie, and so, I'll be with you in a second. I'll, I'm gonna get back to you with Tom Hardy facts. Okay, nice. I need a I need a new laptop because it's really slow. I've had this um, not my entire college career, but probably seven years. Mm. I don't, okay, that sounds really bad. Mm. Going to college for seven years. It sounds like a bad joke. We do, we but do. I did it. I did it uh, while working full time. Yeah, and you did. You did associates, then bachelors, right? Did you yeah. get? Yeah. So, um, I don't know. We talked about it before. I, I kind of want to go back and get like an associates degree in some random thing. Just Tom like, Hardy is forty. Okay, he's looking under that thought. I feel. I feel like because he looks so old and experienced in that movie where he's in the car. Um, but yeah, so the new Star Wars movie. Um, the Last Jedi. I really liked it, and it seems like at least everyone that like gives opinions on YouTube didn't like it. I don't really know why. Um, I mean, there are some plot holes, but I it, feel, it's hmm? called Lock. Ah, Lock. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there are some plot holes, but I feel like there are plot holes in every major movie, which I don't really understand because when you when you have like. Hundreds of millions of dollars for a budget. Why wouldn't you spend a little more time to like sew up any plot holes? Like, I don't know. I mean, you would think like, again, with hundreds of millions of dollars of budget, you could make a movie where like afterwards, no one would make a YouTube video that's like, well, this is ridiculous and have like 35 points about like, you know, things that were wrong in the movie. I'm okay with the plot holes. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't uh, mind them. I, I, I'm not a big plot hole guy. Like, yeah. I, I'm a real big suspension of disbelief guy. Yeah. And, like, everyone has their reasons. The, one of the plot holes is, why did they just crash one of the ship's light speed into... Whatever, it doesn't matter. Could, but here's, yeah, I guess the other ones could travel at light here's, speed, right? Here's my, here's my problem with it. Mm. Here's my problem. Yeah. It's such a big-scale movie, Yeah, but such a small-scale story. And yeah. and like, and you know who did that story better? An episode of Battlestar Galactica. Like I watched it, and I was like, yeah. I've seen this before. Huh. It, I I forget what it's called. It's like Jump or something like that. Yeah. Where every hundred and two minutes, yeah, the whole fleet in Battlestar Galactica had to, had to jump because yeah. the Cylons would show up and try to destroy them. Yeah, and like I, I forget, and and they had to go destroy a Cylon a chip because only one chip could track them. Yeah. It, it was such a great episode, like it, like tense. So like, it's like they took that sh- that episode. Yeah, they expanded it. Yeah, but they added comedy. So you're saying this plot makes a great Battlestar Galactic episode, makes a bad Star Wars movie. Yeah, because Battlestar Galactica was 40 minutes of material. Yeah, and they made it real tense, where this movie was like two hours, and they added like so much uh, comedy. It was a long ass movie. But here's the thing I liked about the movie. Yeah. And and I'm okay with this. The uh, Benicio del Toro's character, yeah, yeah, like they knew they were going to the planet, yeah. And Benicio del Toro, um, they added, they did some world building, yeah. Uh, they they did a lot. They showed more of the Star Wars universe, and they talked about like how like they have the people that are building ships for the good guys and bad guys. Mm-hmm. Like these people don't care. Yeah. It's like we were talking about Trump. These people don't care who you are as long as you're paying them. It is true. That was a little, not, you know, because Star Wars has always been very black and white, I feel like. Um, you know, like you flip a switch from like good to evil. And and there were some gray areas I mean, with Kylo Ren, um, you know, with Ray going towards the dark side a little bit. Um, with, yeah, with, yeah, with these guys who are just out for the money. I mean, I mean, you could say that's evil, but they're not like dark side yeah it's like they're just just regular human evil yeah and um here's the thing about that if you think about it from the empire or the first order first order seems like way worse than the empire but if you think about it from their side yeah they're trying to conquer uh because you have to remember anybody who's star wars there's hut space in that galaxy Mm -hmm. where like no one messes with the huts Mm -hmm. and then there's regular like empire space they're trying, even though it's like a dictatorship, it's real bad and everything. Yeah. They're trying to conquer it, but think about it. Mm. It's even like Westeros, where you have like the seven kingdoms conquered under under one house. Yeah. There's gonna be a peace. Yeah. Now you don't want to live under that rule, but there's peace. No one's gonna be warring. Mm-hmm. True. I mean, and I, and you know, and and we're we're a dark side household. Uh, yeah. Um, me too. 
so you know we left the movie sam said so well first off so so we saw we saw ferdinand two weeks ago which i was fine i liked it you know it was um peyton manning was one of the characters he was was really he was really good i mean i think he's i think he has a career in voice acting if he wants it it's nice i think peyton manning had has a very distinct voice he does yeah but it's good it's like funny i don't know i think and from whenever i've seen him He's su- he seems like such a nice guy. Yeah, like he'd be perfect for children's movies. Yeah, like you like he's a guy he's a guy that you want to root for. Like you want to listen to him. Oh, he is no Tom Hanks in my movie. Like he's yeah. the opposite of that character. Like, oh if my he, god, Peyton like, Manning in that yeah, movie. Yeah, like oh my god, <laughs> like if Peyton Manning found out he had a daughter from a one night stand from like yeah. five years ago. Yeah, he would totally. He'd be like here's nine Papa John's franchises. Yeah. Um, but uh. But anyway, so it was all Friday a couple weeks ago. You know, it was fine. We all liked it. Um, you know, we left the movie. Sam said, I like that one. And then um, this, when we left Star Wars, Sam said, Daddy, I like that one. Allie, I like that one. Mommy, I like that one. Like, he just kept, he just kept, he could tell, he could tell, like, every we passed by, I like that one. So he's pretty excited about it. And he's, and he said, um, he liked, he liked the fighting, which, which I, which, which I clarified that he liked the lightsaber fighting. Um, and he liked the guy, the guy in the black. So he's, he's a big Kylo Ren fan. Um, to be fair, we sort of stacked the deck a little bit because he has like a big Kylo Ren, like action figure. But, um, Oh, I just kidnapped Adam driver. He's under my bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I, I just think he's, uh, I think, he, I, I think he's a good character. I don't know. I'm really curious what his intention was in the movie. Like when he, when he asked Ray to join him. Like, um, like, 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 would like if if Ray accepted? I mean, would they have ruled as the first order? Would he have changed the first order into something more neutral? I, you know, I, at, I don't know. At this point, like, I I think he's so I don't know. Brainwashed isn't the best best word, yeah. But he's so brainwashed, like it would definitely be under the first order, because once he kills Snoke. Mm. Uh, spoilers! Once, <laughs> once he kills Snoke, rewind and pretend you didn't hear. Yeah. <laughs> once he kills Snoke, like he's like, I am the first order. Yeah. And like the, like they're just trying to kill these rebels, which are like three or four hundred. Like, essentially, the rebels are done. Like, I don't care what you say, rebels are done. Yeah. Like, if that was the last Star Wars movie, I'd be fine with it. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know because I mean he's so conflicted. You know, I mean he has so much hate. From, you know, from Luke trying to kill him, um, you know, and that's it seems like that's where his hate stems from, you know, that, you know, and but 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 it seems like I mean, it seems like that moment really turned him, you know, so you would assume a a big tragic event like that, that he could still be turned back. You know, I mean, obviously, he still has a lot of he's really conflicted. You know, he's very much like he's very much like Anakin. Um you know, which ironically, because he really idolizes Darth Vader, you know, he really is very much like Anakin before he became Darth Vader. And he's just very conflicted. And it, and it's, you know, and if you look back at the original movies, you know, if, if, if they took a different path with Anakin, it seems like they, you know, that they could have turned him more towards the light side or, you know, or, or you know, bring balance to the force, whatever bullshit, you know. But uh, so I just really wonder, you know, if he if Ray joined him. And they had the, you know, they had influence over each other, Um, you know, and I'm sure, you know, since Ray was friends with the rebels, like you wonder if he would have, I don't know, if he would have continued to pursue destroying the rebels or or what would have happened. I don't know. I just I just don't believe that, you know, his his, I didn't get take it that his (laughs) offer was for Ray to join the First Order. Right. I thought if it was for them two to team up. And just, I mean, still take over the galaxy, but in their name, not in the First Order's name. I mean, that, that's the way I took it. Yeah. Uh, Which I, maybe still would have been a little evil, but what I liked, what I liked about um, it's a dictatorship, and and just like anything else, dictatorships are bad, proven time and time again. Untrue. But hold on. Yeah. But there is peace. Yeah. You know, like when you when you're talking something on the galaxy side. Or like I mentioned, even smaller, like the Seven Kingdoms, mm. everyone is gonna fight for every inch. Yeah. And then when you have other powerful factions coming in, but you have an empire, yeah, 
that empire is there to protect you. When yeah. your when your when your land gets destroyed by by um, gangs, marauders, yeah. that kingdom is going to send their soldiers. Yeah, you know what you got to do: Sw- swear fealty, uh, pay gold. You know, yeah. or you know, pay credits or whatever you want. Yeah. You lose a lot of your freedoms, <coughs> but you get a lot of protections. In, Mo- in those universes. Jor Mormon said, the common people pray for rain in a summer that never ends. Yeah. And I think that's 100% true. Right. I don't know. That's that, that's like where, that's where, like, that's like where I'm at at work right now. You know, I'm going to write that quote up on the whiteboard at work. Yeah. Because, you know, just wacky shit's going on up top. Right. Just want to see patience. Right. But, um, but, uh, um, well, there's, uh, I totally forgot what I was going to say about it, but, um, like, Sorry, I totally lost my train of like, thought. <laughs> uh, I get what you're saying. Um, there's a lot of people out there that want to be rich and famous. Yeah. I mean, ton. There's a lot of people that want to be rich. Uh, I know I know three or four. I can name three or four people right now that are like, ah, oh, I wish I was rich. I'm not a person that goes, I wish I was rich. I want to be comfortable. I want to have a little bit of land. Yeah. And I, you know, like I want to be able to pay my bills. Like mm. there's no, I don't need the stress. I've already had the stress of being poor. I don't need the stress of being rich, yeah. you know, living up to everybody else's standards. I just want to be comfortable, yeah. and and that's where it is. Like I just want, like the the rain and the summer that never ends. That yeah. he just wants comfort, and that's yeah. that's all. I, that's all I want, you know. And and I think that's what a lot of people need. Yeah. Uh, not not want, but need. And I think you know that's that's what I live for, and. Um, and I think if more people are like that, the rich will get richer and, you know, more power. But not everyone's going to be a winner. So the dictatorship point, that's as, uh, as what, as what I was trying to think of before. Right. I don't remember if this was like an extra history thing or if this was a CG, so CGP Gray on YouTube did a thing about he did like a synopsis of like this, this rules for rulers book. Um, and sort of the idea was that a dictatorship isn't bad in a sense like i you know and, and i mean obviously you know a, a dictatorship under a good dictator is really good for the country and for the world you know you think so you think about like pre world war 1 like the generation before the generation of world war 1 like in europe like had all these great leaders that like you know struck the concert of europe and like kept peace and stuff and then you had a and then, but then, you know, the problem with dictatorship is that it's unstable, you know, and we see this with like North Korea now, or we see it with like the leaders that were in Europe during, during World War One, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, this really, you know, there's so much power invested in one person that it's a really unstable institution. Um, you know, you know, if you sort of, you know, you roll the dice at each time there, there's a new dictator um, versus, you know, what makes democracy better is that, you know, democracy is definitively worse than a dictatorship under a good dictator. <laughs> you know, less stuff gets done. You know, less good things happen. Bureaucrats. Yeah, it takes yeah. longer to get things done. You know, there's there, it's hard to make big, sweeping, drastic changes that might be better for people. But there's stability. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the evidence is, you know, since World War II, you know, I mean, we've gone now... 80 years almost without like another global conflict, you know, and, and, and in fact, we've gone 80 years without any major conflict between like major powers. And that's a long time. And that's because of democracies basically, because, you know, it's, even though democracy is like pretty bland and vanilla and like shit doesn't really get done, like shit doesn't get a lot worse, either, <laughs> you know, and 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 it's hard for two democracies to really fight each other because that means you got to get all these people on both sides to agree, which just doesn't really happen. Right. So it's just safer. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, democracy is like the vanilla sex of, like, leadership <laughs> styles. Uh, like, it's fine, you know, but you're not going to hurt yourself. Yeah. I just I always – if if when it comes to equality, people want to be equal. A lot of people want to be equal to the 1%. And it's not – it's not that you want to be equal to the 1%. It's like everyone should want to be equal to the point where, like, you always have food in your stomach. Your kids are always taken care of. They're well-educated. You always have heat in the winter. 
You know, you not this winter. You know, not not this winter. It's impossible. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, you you can, um, like, say if you're married, uh, you can support your family on one job while mm-hmm. the other person, man or woman, uh, takes care of the house and the kids. And maybe they can work a part time job just to mm-hmm. stay busy. But like that, that's the equality everyone should strive for. Mm-hmm. Not not equality keeping up with the Joneses. It should be food in your stomach, heat in the winter. And one one job, one and a half jobs can take care of everything. Mm-hmm. You get, you know, your two or three vacations a year. Uh, you know, you have two reliable cars. Uh, you know, you don't need a TV in every room, but you have Internet. So, uh, you know, the way that everything moves, your kids can do research, do their homework, you know. And, yeah. like, past that, what do you need? Yeah. You know, you go, you grab pizza on Fridays and, you know, go out to dinner once a week. Everybody has a good birthday. You have a half decent Christmas. Like, that's what, that's the equality everybody should strive for. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I don't know. And, and, uh, if, if a dictator could promise that, I'd vote for him. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know, and then, but then they you just, you just don't know what you're getting once that person dies or whatever, yeah. you know. And, and, uh, I mean, but then here's here's the uh, bad part about it. Uh, our culture in America mm. is uh, individualistic yeah. and sort of collective. So, like, everybody wants to be an individual, which is fine. It's great. You should be an individual. You should have your own own thoughts and, and everything. Whereas if it was more collective, mm. uh, it makes it easier for everyone. Like, everyone, like, like a lot of women... Uh, a lot of women want to strive and, and, you know, wear makeup and be skinny and everything and wear the most fashionable things. But if everybody's wearing blue jeans, like uh, Karl Marx mm. and uh, the, uh, who's the guy? Stalin. Mm. Everyone's wearing blue jeans and red T-shirts on Tuesdays. Everyone's equal. You yeah. know, it takes the individualism away, but everyone's equal. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. Um I feel like I'm really blanking out a lot during today's podcast. I don't really know why. Yeah. I feel like you've had, I feel like you've had too many deep thoughts for me oh, uh, today. Um, I don't know. I just I had a lot of different thoughts on that. I don't even know what to what to say. Uh, you know, on, on the, the the immediate thing that made me think of was um, um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I make fun of uh, the fact that like no males in South Philly work. <laughs> I, I think I don't think they came pre podcast or earlier in the podcast. And then that just makes it me comes think, up every podcast. What makes me think about that is that they're in fact un-American. Not, not only they're bad people, but but the way you just portrayed it would make them actually un-American. Yeah. So, um, oh, so that's what I was thinking about earlier, and and that's I think is what's been stuck in my head that keeps blocking things. So ICE, you know the the immigration people, yeah. overnight, like in the wee hours of the morning this morning, raid it this morning. Yep. Yeah. Raid it. I think it's ninety eight. 7-Elevens across the country. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how not to laugh at it. Like, it's probably actually kind of scary. It's like a real, like, crystal knocked sort of night. It was like 7-Eleven crystal knocked, essentially. Um, um, yeah, I mean, ba- basically, basically, do- basically, ICE is currently Donald Trump's SS. Right. And they raid it almost 100 7-Elevens across the country and deport it like 20-something people already. And the remaining people have three days to come up with their immigration papers or, or they're out. Uh, oh, uh, years ago in Riverside, New Jersey, there was a lot of Brazilians and Portuguese and Mexicans. There aren't any more. There are not any more. Uh, overnight, they went in and they like at the apartment complexes and all these houses, they went mm-hmm. and they evicted like hundreds of people and uh, sent them back to the countries and everything. Huh. And the workforce of South Jersey was like destroyed. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was like for for weeks they couldn't like find workers because there's a lot of construction workers and painters and laborers huh. and everything. You know, somebody's like mid painting your house and then yeah. you got deported. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, they got deported. And there was a lot of illegal people, but like Riverside and uh, Delran, they did yeah. it together overnight. Wow. And they the Burlington County Times like wrote it, but you know, ironically, no one got their Papers delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, 
I don't know. You know what they said? I mean, they, there's no explanation why they targeted 7-Eleven specifically. They basically just said that they were a company. You know, they aren't all right anyway. You know, a nice official said, you know, they were a company that was known to employ a lot of illegal immigrants. And they wanted to send a strong message that, like, this will happen to other companies, too, if they continue, like, employing illegal immigrants. Ah, uh, that's fucking stupid. Who um, cares? But, yeah, that's the thing. I, this, is, this has been my thing all along. Like, if you want to come to this country and you want to have a job, fucking do it. I mean, there are, again, there's so many people in this country that don't even want to work. Well, so, so if you want to come here and you want to work, work. It, like, at like, as soon as someone gets a job in this country and has the job for some period of time, right. they should be a citizen. Yeah. Because you know what? Because they're better than a certain percentage of Americans that are here. Well, people complain like, oh, they're not paying taxes. <laughs> well, a lot of the illegal in- immigrants are paying taxes. I think they still pay taxes, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, they are helping the economy because they still have to pay rent. Yeah. They have to pay car insurance. They have to buy groceries. They have to buy food. They have to buy clothes. They have kids. They have to entertain their children. They're still helping the economy. And yeah. a lot pay taxes all right i gotta uh, change the i need your opinion on this mm-hmm. i think i think i did i think i gave pretty good father fatherly advice mm-hmm. uh people <laughs> are you the tom hanks in the story no no tom hanks uh so um i take my brother to the bank on saturday mm-hmm. and uh his son and daughter are in the car man we stay in the car because it's a lot easier yeah uh, and you know lugging two kids out for like five minutes right and this guy walks out and uh his son, uh, who get like he complained about being bullied, which you know bullying is like terrible. It's like tough on a lot of kids and everything. Yeah, he complained about being bullied before, and like he still gets bullied uh, for whatever reasons. He doesn't like talking about it. Like, I mean, I'm his uncle, so he doesn't have to talk to me about it. Yeah. But like he talks to his parents about it, which is like good mm-hmm. and everything. And he's like, oh yeah, that's that looks like the substitute teacher that I make fun of. And I was like, wait, I asked him. I turn around. I go. Do you make fun of someone? He's like, uh, 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 And I was like, you get bullied, right? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, does it make you feel good? He's like, no. And I was like, do you think making fun of somebody else makes them feel good? And he goes, no. He's like, uh, why don't make fun of them? I was like, well, you can't make fun of people. Like, you can't be a bully yeah. and be bullied. And, like, he, like, I think he thought about it, like, for a good, like, half an hour. Like, he didn't talk for, like, an hour. Yeah. And I think, and I think, like, me making that correlation that if he's bullied and doesn't feel good and he's making fun of other people, like it doesn't make them feel good. Like he's, he's making it work. Like, what do you think yeah. about that? No, yeah, I think, I think that's really good. And I think, I think it's good to say that stuff too. I mean, sometimes it's uncomfortable. I feel like I'm like kind of hard on Allison, um, with some stuff, but I feel like I try I feel like I'm like, I feel like I act like that with her. Like when she calls something out and it's like hypocritical, I like bring it up to her. Right. Um, cause she was the age now where she was like, you know, we'll criticize like me and Kelly for a lot of stuff, and I'll be like, "Well, we well, just did that same thing," and then she'll get like real mad about it. Right. But I think it's good to call that stuff out. Yeah. I think they they realize. Um, but I don't know. The whole bully thing makes me honestly really mad. Um, I don't know. Just thinking about, um, but so like so, so like so like Sam has has so, so there's this girl at Sam's school that like bullies him. <laughs> um, and well, remind everyone how old Sam is. So so he's three. Okay, there we yeah. go. Yeah. So, so I mean, I don't really know what goes on. I don't know if he just, you know, because he, because he like makes, you know, he, you know, kids of that age makes them up sometimes. But I mean, there must be something that has happened for him to like say it, you know, because like, well, you know, so his best friend at school is this kid Carson, who, who like, who like, so, so I've never met him, but I've seen pictures of them two together, and they're like, like, it's like they look like pretty cool together, like, you know, because Sam's like, you know, Sam's like, like, a, like a little bit on the taller side and skinny. He's like a little skinny white kid. Carson's like a little bigger black kid. So they're like, look like a really like, like they'd be like a real oh, funny pair together. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um. So, so, so I'd actually, lo- I don't know. I don't know how it would happen. But I'd, I'd love to like actually see them two together. Um. He's just like shooting off racial names. Yeah. <laughs> to, they're just to each other. Yeah. <laughs> um. But but yeah, I mean, because they did. <laughs> Sam goes. Sam goes. Buys that monkey in, in, in the jungle t shirt for him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm sure they're like really funny together. Um, but um, but yeah, they but they've been in school together. So they both like you know I mean like for like two years now for like two thirds of their life basically they've been together in school. Um, but then there's this, this girl Ella who like who like supposedly like pushes him and stuff. And like whenever you pick Sam up, we're like, you know, you always ask Sam, you always ask Sam like, oh, how was school? So like, oh, it was good. And we're like, what did you do? He's like, oh, I played with Carson. And then, we're, and then we're like, God, did anything happen with Ella? And he's like, oh, Ella pushed me over. We're like, did you push her back? Sam's like, yeah, I pushed her back. And we're yeah. like, good. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But, um, 
but yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't I, like. I don't know. Hopefully, he's really doing that because it would piss me off if like I don't know. Apparently, apparently, Lara flipped out one time because like Sam had like a scratch on him, and he said that Ella scratched him. Yeah. And again, I have no idea if that's really true or not because yeah. like you know, kids that age make Kid, stuff yeah, up. They, they get kids. Uh, I still get bruises and random scratches. Yeah, like, how this happens? So like kids, like a thousand percent more than me. Yeah, uh, but I mean, do you do you think like? Like a three year old kid like understands girl and boy? I don't know. That's what like, I like yeah. I understand like like Sam, yeah, he doesn't care. He'll play with purses and shoes and Barbies, yeah. but he'll also play with trucks. Yeah. He doesn't give a shit what he plays with. Yeah. And that's probably because the way he's like nurtured between yeah. like you and like his mom who who's lives with her sister. Yeah. You know, uh so it's like it's like a nurture versus nature thing. Hmm. But it's like do you think kids like if parents didn't push him to play with like certain toys do you think like kids that old like even care about like you're like like sam's gonna push a girl like and yeah. you slap his hand like you can't push girls and he's like what oh we tell her to push her like, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. If, if she hits you you hit her right back I mean, like good parents <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um and, like parents who want to instill lessons in yeah. their children that's that's the lesson. If a girl hits you, you hit her back, Sam. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, up till yeah. the age of like six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, at a certain <laughs> point, you have to stop. But yeah. um, once you can start like, uh, you know, karate classes, then you can't hit them anymore. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. But but I mean, I don't think I don't know. I can't really tell. You know, I I I feel like sometimes when we ask him, he's a little weird. So I I, like, I do wonder if it like really affects him. But I don't think he's really old enough to really think about it too much. You know, but there are kids that like are like afraid to go to school and stuff because they're gonna get bullied. Like that's like that makes you mad. Like that's fucked up. Yeah. Um, and, and no one knows like they've been trying to stop bullying and everything. But like what I what I did this weekend mm-hmm. was like, hey, does being bullied make you feel good? No. Yeah. Then why do you do it? Yeah. You I know, mean, like like even though like he makes fun of me, like I, I I'm pretty sure he makes fun of uh, a grown man. Yeah. behind his back it's still bullying yeah yeah and i mean you know i mean i was like i mean i mean i was like peyton when i was a kid i mean i definitely like kids made fun of me and stuff and um you know i mean i you know i went to uh i mean fortunately i went to from fourth grade i went to like a private school so like kids were like 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 there wasn't any really real bad kids in my class yeah. and but, and from a couple episodes ago uh we realized we found out that you were a total mama's boy so yeah, making yeah. funny is like really easy yeah yeah no i i'm sure i was i'm sure i was that you know still still am now but um like if kelly hit you now like you'd run the mayor and like mayor kelly hit me and she'd <laughs> like get like like mayor like why you hit my son <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, I got made, made fun of in school, you know, and, and it's, you know, and I don't know, but like, you don't really want, you know, if I had friends in school too. Like it wasn't, I mean, people like don't have any friends that like, you know, where it, and it's like, that makes you just even, I don't know, it just makes you mad and makes you feel bad and stuff. Like, so there's, there's a, there's a great Robert Frank video about bullying. Look up Robert Frank, six, one, five bullying. Um, he, he has a great video. I mean, his answer to everything is go to the gym, yeah. but like, really is true though <laughs> my friend he's a little darker naturally if you know <laughs> what i mean yeah his i don't know i really like he's like a real positive upbeat guy even though he like screams into the microphone about some things but uh but uh, his bullying video is really good he talks about you know and again i mean his advice was pretty simplistic but i don't really disagree with it you know his he said, you know, someone wrote in and it was like, oh, you know, my son watched your videos. You know, he's like afraid to go to school because he gets bullied. And his advice is basically like, ah, oh, it's probably some little fat fuck that's bullying him. You know, you know, you should start taking him to the gym every day, you know, and the, the bigger he gets, the less he's going to get bullied. And eventually he's going to be ripped. And, and that other fat fucks are going to be going to the pool in a t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> you know? but, 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 but like, it's true though, you know, and a lot of, and, and there's a lot of truth in it because that's what it is. It's like kids that like have low self esteem that bully other kids. So it's like a tougher problem, you know, like, like it, like it's hard to just say like that these kids are bad kids that bully other, other kids. Um, because I think in a lot of ways, like those kids just feel shitty about themselves. That's why they, you know, it's the same thing. Like Peyton feels bad because he gets bullied. So he like makes fun of this teacher to try to feel better about himself. You know, in that case, I mean, it's a probably, it's pretty innocent, you know, because I mean, the, you know, teacher, I'm sure that teacher doesn't care, you know, he's an adult, but, um, but, you know, but that's sort of the concern is, you know, there's these kids that probably they have shitty parents or like other kids made fun of them or like they're, you know, they're again, their home life sucks or something. So they go and they take it out on other kids and then they, they pass on that misery to other people. 
Um, so I don't know. Like I, I mean, the bullying thing is just harder, you know. And I mean, honestly, Robert, Frank, if everyone went to the fucking gym and felt good about themselves, yeah. I mean, probably nobody would bully each other. Yeah. I don't know. We've talked about this before. Going to the gym, as long as you do it properly, have no bad side effects. It's honestly really, I don't know, man. Like, you know, and I mean, in my, I mean, I see a lot of, you know, I mean, I see guys for like, you know, ED and stuff and like low libido and issues and stuff. And some of them have legit, I mean, I mean, I, I actually have guys where we've had this conversation where they're like, you know, you know, I've been working out, I've been going to the gym, you know, I've been going to the gym for six months. I lost like 30 pounds. Like I'm in, I'm in better shape, but I'm just like, you know, I'm still having these problems. You know, those guys have really like real hormonal problems and stuff that we can fix. Yeah. And there's other guys you just want to sort of shake and be like, you just need to get off the couch. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like that stuff would, would fix you. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, you can't, you know, I mean, and, and, you know, and you sort of professionally tell people that way is like, ah, oh, you know, if you, you know, you know, you know, fat tissues like hormonally active, you know, if you lose weight, you're going to, this is how it's going to improve your body. And it's how it's going to improve these problems and stuff. You, you talk to people about that, but, um, people don't want to hear it. They just want, a lot of people want a pill yeah. to fix it. Yeah. They want like a quick fix. I don't know. I mean, you know, we could do that too, but it's, it's just hard it's, work. It's, it's, no. it's, it's like a temporary solution, yeah. you know? Um, you know, and I mean, I, and, and again, I mean, you know, people are in all different situations in life and, um, you know, you, you can't really judge people, but, you know, but I, I do, I don't know. I, now that, so I guess, so my like health history, I mean, um, you know, I always like went up and down like weight wise. Um, you know, I was like probably overweight for probably 80% of my life to this point. Um, and you know, I'm like more of a stockier build person. You know, as if you've seen the solo week houses and you don't know me, you know me from there. You know, I'm more of a stockier build person, so I've always had like extra weight, but it's been like somewhat muscle at least. Um, but about four or five years ago, um, when I was getting married for the first time, um, I lost a, like 30 pounds, but from dieting, and I actually got like like fairly skinny, you know, but I, I didn't work out a second, you know, no, no, it was just very strict diet control. And it was actually, it was kind of fun, like the challenge of it. And like, I kept that weight off for a couple of years, like even after I stopped dieting. So, I mean, a couple of years of dieting and then like probably a whole nother year, I kept it off. So maybe it's longer than four or five years ago now at this point, I don't even know. But I kept, you know, just because, you know, having such a strict diet for so long, it took a long time to gain the weight back because I, I didn't eat as much as I used to. But then eventually I gained it back after like a, a whole year of like not giving a shit anymore. But then I started going to the gym for like a year and I, you know, ate like shit, but I went to the gym and I like lost weight and I was doing like half cardio, half like, half like, uh, you know, like weight training stuff. Um, so then I was, I was like in pretty decent shape and then i had another year or basically off where i didn't eat good eat well or go to the gym so i gained like all the weight back i was like almost as fat as i was at my fattest like 6 or 7 years ago um, and then 4 or 5 months ago i started going to the gym again and i go like way harder than i did the year i went before and i do it's like all i, I haven't done a second of cardio it's like all weight training like an hour an hour and a half four or five times a week um, i i'm i'm already i'm like lifting way heavier than I did like even at the end of the year that I went before. Cause I'm just, I'm, I just, you know, I, I think part of it, I know what I'm doing now, which was before I took me a while to figure out like a routine. Cause I'd never gone to the gym before. Um, the last like time I did it. And then also, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I guess I think about it a little bit differently now. Um, and, 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 and watch a lot of Robert Frank too, I guess. Um, but, uh, Robert Frank 615, Robert 615. So, so I've definitely put on a lot more muscle. Like I think I think I probably had more upper body muscle than I did like after the year of going to the gym before. Um, and so I'm at the point now where, you know, I still have a ways to go. You know, I hopefully over the next few months, I'll like lift heavier than I'm doing now. Um, you know, you, you can clearly see my stomach muscles, but there's a whole fucking big layer of fat on top of them. Yeah. So it's like far from a, like any sort of definition. Um, I, my, I still have, I still have fat in my man boobs, but they're like flat now. They're not like boobs anymore. <laughs> they're, they're just, they're, they're just sort of flabby pecs now. Yeah. Uh, same, uh, <coughs> same thing happened to me yeah. uh, before I got married. Cause I think every guy wants like look good. Mm. Like women, are, women obviously want to look good for their wedding. 
Yeah. And uh, like I was like, oh, I'll get down to like two fifteen. So I was <laughs> two twenty one. Okay. And my ex, uh, she said, I'll take you like any if you get down to two fifteen. No, sorry. If you get down to two eighteen, yeah, I'll take you to any barbecue place you want. Eat whatever you want because right. I love barbecue. So I think I got down to like two twenty one, and then my dad died. Yeah, and like as soon as like you like I kicked open the the the, the door. Yeah. And like I like ate all his food, so I went back up to like two thirty, yeah. and then like a month before my, he died, let's see, October like three months before my wedding. Yeah. So like I ate like like uh, fucking drank and ate for like two months, and then I went back to two thirty, yeah. and then like right before my wedding, like I like pretty much fasted for a month, hmm. and I got down to like two eighteen. And if you step on my scale, there's a setting on there. Yeah. For the weight I had to hit, and as soon as that thing beeps, mm. um, like it was, it was set for a weight. I think it was like two eighteen or two nineteen. Yeah, and it's set for that. When that beeps, I was gonna get all the barbecue I wanted, like paid for. Yeah, and uh, it's still set. So I think, I think like if I get down to that, like I should email her and like call her on it, like hey, yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. So like that, I put that on, and then like I, and then. Uh, that story went got a roll sad turn there. No, yeah. I just just the same thing happened to me, and then yeah. I went and I gained like all this weight, and then I lost it again. Yeah, and then uh, I don't know, I just started eating again, and now like I'm back up to like two forty three. Yeah, so I got to get back down to two fifteen. Yeah, I mean the problem. So the problem with me is I like to go to the gym, and then just my routine changed. You know, because at the time I was. I was basically, I was in exile. That was my like year in exile. And, um, and, um, so, I mean, I, I really had no place to be. So, you know, so I would, you know, I was at my grandmom's house and like at Kelly's parents' house and stuff. So, you know, no place I really could be all the time. So I would just go to the gym cause I just needed something to do. Um, and I really wasn't doing anything else anyway, but I was starting to like it. But then once I basically, as soon as I moved back into my own house, is when I stopped going before because then I like my routine totally changed and like I wanted to be home and I had like stuff to do. Um, but then what ended up sort of a, it's sort of the way it evolved that I started going back was well, one, my sleep apnea came back cause I have sleep apnea. Um, and from gaining the weight, it came back. So I, so I'm using the fucking CPAP machine again and stuff, which, which if you're one of our three listeners and you have sleep apnea though, like go get tested and use it. Cause you'll feel a thousand times better, but like, it's frustrating to use it for a while and then not have to use it for a couple of years and then have to use it again. It was like pretty big defeat. That's one of the things that pushed me over. Um, but, uh, but then, you know, essentially the way it evolved was, you know, I would, um, you know, we'd come home, you know, hang out for a little while and then, you know, Kelly would put Allie to bed and then, um, you know, and I would like, you know, play stuff on the computer and, and all. And then, um, you know, and, 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 and sort of, and sort of my nights got later and later doing that. So then that's, that's where I found the gym time. Cause I'm like, well, I mean, I'm essentially wasting that time now anyway. So why don't I just go to the gym? during that time period. So I go really late, you know, but that's how I fit it in my schedule. Now it's the time I was just by myself doing shit on the computer. Anyway, now I go to the gym instead. So it's like more, more productive you know, use of my time. And I feel a lot better. And yeah, I was saying to JD before we started too, I would say, you know, if you put it like on a, at a Madden rating, you know, I'm at like a juiciness of like in the twenties somewhere, you know, like I'm still far from like, looking really good but even like at this like you feel like i like feel like people interact you feel, with you differently you feel better yeah you have more confidence uh real quick before we wrap up yeah uh kelly yeah got venmo because she she texted me back like i felt bad like i was she venmo me and i mm-hmm. felt bad like I'm, I'm like i'm not petty for 325 yeah uh every dollar counts yeah because she uh uh she always owed claire yeah and never had money yeah. <laughs> well, what's the thing? I yeah, I used to have to. I used to. Have to I, I used to send. So, so Claire's on Wells Fargo too. So I used to send her through the through the bank. I used to send her the stuff. I guess Claire watches Allison. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I didn't know we were paying. Yeah. Uh, well, over the summer. Yeah. I don't know anything recently, but um, yeah, she watched her for at least like two thirds of the summer, probably. So we so we paid her for that. You know. Um, 
she like watched her a few days when uh when she was you know over the christmas break but i don't i don't think we paid her anything for that because it was just like a couple days here and there but i don't know i mean you should you should pay her. we probably should you know? but that's <laughs> that's this week's whole week casa um thanks uh thanks for downloading our uh episodes come to youtube so we can love you yeah come to youtube so we can love you no stop